Hi everyone, and welcome to Google Cloud Security. My name is Ben Perel, and I'm a security partner specialist here at Google Public Sector. In this guide, I'm going to walk you through launching the Google Cloud Security MCP servers inside Firebase Studio using the Klein extension. We'll start by setting up a new Firebase workspace, then we'll configure our environment, clone the official Google Security MCP repository, and finally, set up Klein to get our servers running. The written version of this guide will be posted in the video description below. By the end of this video, you'll be fully set up to use these powerful security tools in your own environment and start using your own agentic security use cases. Let's get started. First, head over to Firebase Studio. If you're not familiar with it, Firebase Studio is a cloud-based development environment designed to accelerate building, testing, deployment, and running of production quality AI applications. It lets you start projects right in your browser without a complex local setup, so it's perfect for what we're doing today. We're going to create a new workspace by clicking the New Workspace button here on the bottom left, and then clicking the New Empty Workspace to start with a blank template. And we'll call our workspace Security MCP Demo. And we'll hit the Create button. This will take just a few moments for our environment to be ready. Now that our workspace is ready, we need to make a small but important change to the dev.nix file. Firebase Studio is built on Nix OS, where the entire system configuration is managed declaratively in text files just like this. This approach enables perfectly reproducible builds, meaning that you can create a consistent and reliable environment every single time. To ensure our tools can communicate securely, we're going to add a package for handling certificates. This will be vital for the Google SecOps source server, which needs to handle the SSL TLS certificates correctly for the Simplify SOAR domain. I'll go ahead and add this as a new package by typing in pkgs.cacert, and we can ensure this is a correct package by finding it in the list here. Next, I'm going to add an environmental variable so that we can dynamically find this at runtime and the right path. And to do that, I'll just hit enter here and then paste the SSL cert file line. Once you've added this code, you'll see this blue rebuild environment button here. And if you don't see that, it's almost always because of some syntax issue, like a missing comma, bracket, or an extra space somewhere. So just ensure that the syntax is correct. And once you're done, go ahead and click the Rebuild Environment button. With the environment rebuilt, let's open a terminal. And you can do this quickly in VS Code or Firebase Studio using the Control and back tick buttons. I'm going to run this command, which will create a new directory called tier one demo with the correct permissions. And now let's navigate into that directory. Now we're going to clone the official MC, Google MCP security repository from GitHub. And to do that, I'm going to use the git clone command. Now we need to set up our environmental variables to securely store our API keys and other configuration details for the security MCP servers. So let's navigate to here, to the security MCP dash security directory and create a new empty .env file. And we can do that by running this command. Now let's open the new env file and we will paste in the .env.example from the guide. To do that, I'm going to use the VS Code editor, but you can use whatever editor you're most familiar with. I'll go ahead and paste in the actual uh, .env.example. And now let's quickly show over 
uh, where you can find these credentials. So the Chronicle project ID and the Chronicle customer ID can be found in your Google SecOps SIM environment. So let's pop open to our Google SecOps console. And in this case, I'm running the Google Unified SecOps SIM and SOAR, but this will work if you just have the standalone Google SecOps SIM as well. And we can go to the SIM settings here, and here is where I can find my customer ID and my GCP project ID. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this just so you can see what one of these examples looks like. So this is the customer ID here. I'm going to replace this, ensure that the quotes are still there and that it is correctly entered in. I'm going to leave the Chronicle region as US, and now we need to configure our SOAR. So what we need to do to find the simplify SOAR URL is copy this part, go back to our Google SecOps console, open up the developer tools, which in Chrome is in more tools, developer tools, and we will simply paste the simplify SOAR part there. And this is going to filter out request to this URL. Now we might see requests coming in, but we might have to reload the page to get request here. And then we can click any of these to find the code in front of our simplify SOAR domain and copy that. And this is mine in this case. Yours will be a unique value for your environment. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the your SOAR instance here with that value. And now I need to add the SOAR API key as well. To find that, I can go back to my Google SecOps console here, and I can go into SOAR settings. I can go into advanced API keys, and you can see I've already created one before, but to create a new one, I would just hit the add API key, ensure the application name is meaningful and that it's given the correct permissions to execute uh, whatever tools that I wanted to use from the MCP servers, and ensure that you copy this to clipboard before closing and saving out of here. And this API key will be pasted right here. Next, you'll do the same thing with your virus total or Google Threat Intelligence API key, and you can find that by clicking on the link right here. Lastly, we need to update the SSL cert file with the actual path to where it got dynamically resolved at runtime. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and run the echo command on that variable to find what the value is. And we will copy this whole path, ensuring that we have all of the forward slashes and paste that here. Now go ahead and finish completing the rest of your SOAR configuration. I'm going to complete the rest of this off screen. All right, we're almost there. Now we need to install a fast Python package manager called UV to launch our security MCP servers. And we'll use the curl command to download and install it to ensure that we get the latest version of UV. I'm also going to run the source command since we are using the bash shell to add this to our shells path. And now we need to install the latest version of Python, which we can do using UV with this command. And it's important to mention that we're installing UV in this manner to ensure that we get the most up-to-date version that supports all the feature flags used in the security MCP server configuration. And while you could declaratively set this up in the dev.nix file as adding pkgs.uv or pkgs.python3 respectively. Because the channel, the stable release channel is an older channel, it is not taking, it is not picking up the latest versions of these packages. And in some cases, it is not providing all the features that we need in order to run these MCP servers. So while you could change the release channel to an unstable channel and add those packages declaratively that way, which is technically the more uh, appropriate way to do it in NixOS. For this demo, we're going to run this um, in the terminal to ensure that we're getting the latest versions so that our MCP servers can work correctly. Also, I wanted to make a quick note 
on the authentication for your Google SecOps SIM environment and your Google Cloud Security Command Center environment. That will be using the IAM permissions that you sign in with as your Firebase Studio user in this top right part here. So if you're finding you're having permissions, ensure that the user that you're signed in with in Firebase Studio has the correct GCP IAM permissions to do so. All right. At this point, we are ready to install the client extension. So to install client, we'll go ahead and open up the extensions tab on the left here. And we'll type in client. And it is the second one here, which we will click install. This will just take a few minutes, moments to install, and then we'll open it from the side panel. And we're going to use our own API key. Now you can use any LM provider that you're most familiar with. In this case, I'm going to use the GCP Vertex AI API provider to give me access to hundreds of different models. And I'm going to paste in my project ID. Firebase Studio will authenticate you when you actually try to enter in a message here to Klein. But for now, we'll just hit, we'll configure it this way, hit the let's go and finish our configuration. The first thing we want to do is disable a few settings here. So we'll go to the general settings. I will deselect the allow error and usage reporting. And then on the feature settings, I'm going to ensure that the MCP display mode is set to plain text and not to rich display. And this will ensure that we're not potentially resolving any malicious domains that could be used as part of our security MCP agentic use cases. The final configuration step in Klein is to click on the MCP server icon and then configure the MCP servers. So let's go ahead and click this icon, which will bring us three different tabs where we can either download or install third-party MCP servers. We can install remote MCP servers if they're running on some URL endpoint. And then we can install local MCP servers, which is what we're doing today. And Klein communicates through these to these servers using standard input-output via a sub-process. In order to configure the servers, we'll just click on this configure MCP server button here, and this will create a file called client MCP settings.json, which we can fill out. Now you can just copy the part in the guide here and fully repaste over this here. You will have to ensure that the workspace name and the project name matches your environment that you set. But if you've done everything else correctly or the same, then it should be the same path here. We also need to ensure that the command is, is picking up the right UV. So to do this, we can open up the terminal one more time. And run which UV. And in this case, this is in fact the same path. So I'm all set here. And we can see that the way that the MCP servers are working is it's running this command from this directory. And you can see the run part, passing in our ENV file with our configurations, and then running the actual server file itself to start the MCP server. Now, at this point, we should see all of our MCP servers up and running, which we can do by coming over here to the MCP servers installed section and verify that all four servers are indeed active and running by seeing this green icon here. We can also tell that these are enabled by this checkbox being green. Now we can look at the tools to ensure that all the tools loaded successfully by clicking on these down arrows here. So we see the amount of tools and the doc string and also the required arguments for this MCP tool. And at this point, we have it. So you can see the servers are online and you are now fully set up to use the Google Cloud Security MCP servers in Firebase Studio to help augment your SOC. So to quickly summarize, 
We started with an empty Firebase Studio workspace, configured its environment, cloned the official Google MCP security repository, and set up the client extension to launch all of the Google Cloud Security MCP servers locally. I hope this guide was helpful and for detailed step-by-step -step instructions and to copy the code snippet, snippets used in this video, please refer to our setup guide, which I've linked in the description below. It contains all the steps that we covered today. If you have any questions, please join the community. We're happy to help. You can also find the link to the community in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.